Big time rock and roll ticket prices have ballooned out of hand because of Ticketmaster's dynamic pricing system that they got going on over there. We've heard horror stories from Blink-182, Oasis, and now most recently, My Chemical Romance. Today, we're gonna rip into this drama the same way that a fiend rips into their scabs, but before we do, hey, hi, hello, my name is Dan Frampton, welcome to my YouTube channel. We all love a good rock and roll tour, right? And we all love a good comeback rock and roll tour, right? So when we hear that My Chemical Romance is coming back with this gigantic stadium tour, hype is gonna be through the roof at a fever pitch, I would say. And it's not a world tour, it's just a handful of dates over here. So you're thinking, oh my God, comeback tour, My Chemical Romance, handful of dates, that means not a lot of opportunity to see them, we're gonna get crazy prices, right? But they announced tickets on sale 10 a.m. When that happens, sold out immediately. Yep, so yeah, prices are probably gonna be pretty crazy, but people are definitely willing to shell it out. The top comment here, love y'all so much, but $800 for pit and $300 for nosebleeds Hurt. I get resellers aren't helping, but I don't know. This feels wrong. A lot of your fan base is younger people who don't have the money or means to travel on top of the outrageous prices. We've heard this same story time and time again, and it's just ramping up as we go throughout these years. The top comment on the announcement poster is even better. When I was a young boy, my father couldn't afford to take me to the Black Parade. And it's a shame because it's absolutely true in today's day and age. So when you're like, oh, man, people are saying stuff about this. People are a little bit outraged. I wonder where I'm going to go to find that. Ah, uh, how about Twitter.com? And we see people posting their emotions. We see people posting the prices over here. Someone named Brittany tweets out, what are these My Chemical Romance prices crying face emoji? Showing a screenshot. Standard admission, section G, row 9, $550. Section 140, row F, $600. Now I understand when a really big band is doing a comeback tour, ticket prices are gonna be expensive off rip. That much is to be known. I mean, just saying the words My Chemical Romance tickets out loud sounds expensive. What isn't okay is changing the prices once they've been listed, and that is what Ticketmaster does. They balloon the prices up based on how many people are interested in them. Them being the tickets. Not interested in Ticketmaster themselves. That would be ridiculous. But Ticketmaster, the people in control of the tickets, and the Live Nation, the people in control of booking these big time gigs, are actually working together, and it just seems so corrupt, and I don't understand how it's allowed to go on. But I am not an economist. I'm not that smart of a person. I have marbles rolling around up here, but all I know is dynamic pricing seems very evil. And then you just go up to the next screenshot and it says, hey, you're now 22,831 in queue. Tickets for this event have been priced in advance by the tour from $80 to $855. Yes, Meatball, $800. And $55. You heard that correctly. Then we got a Twitter user named Lisette tweeting out, Hey yo, I was curious to see what the greedy resale motherfuckers are pricing these My Chemical Romance tickets. And all I can say, y'all are going to hell. The first screenshot shows, hit, general admission, verified retail ticket, priced at $1,157.32. Now this is something I didn't know that you could do. I thought that all the resellers had to go to like SeatGeek and like third party stuff, but as it turns out, you can definitely resell your tickets on Ticketmaster. So then more verified retail prices are set at $10,000. <laughs> $4,500. That is insanity. The more people that are interested, the more expensive this is getting. And then for it to be allowed to happen on the same platform that the dynamic pricing is happening, it's just such an evil cycle to be going around it. And then you see screenshots like this. Got him. Hmm. What does that remind you of? Do we have any uh, sneaker heads in the audience? Yeah. This seems like the kind of practice that Nike got into where they release a limited amount of sneakers on the app. Everybody logs onto the app at a certain time on the drop day and then only a certain number of people get greeted with this lovely got em message and then everybody runs to social media to post their hey i got them and all this meant is now you're going to follow this account over to a resale website for a 
astronomical markup. But what Ticketmaster is doing, they're taking that middleman out. They're like, hey, don't go over to SeatGeek. Do your evil here with us. Crazy. And then we hop on over here to the My Chemical Romance Reddit, and we got this gigantic post basically in defense of dynamic pricing. Pretty crazy, just like the most fanboy coping stuff ever. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. And it's gotten upvoted like crazy almost 900 times. And then someone comes in with a little bit of logic and reason and only gets 34 likes. Dynamic pricing is predatory bullshit. And I know I've been saying that a lot throughout this entire video. Maybe you're not exactly sure the nitty gritty of what dynamic pricing is. So I pulled up routers.com. When asked, what is dynamic pricing? Dynamic pricing, also known as surge pricing, is a strategy in which businesses push up prices at times of high demand. This is commonly seen in airline ticket prices and hotel rooms, as well as Uber surge pricing during peak traffic hours. Okay, all right. Hmm, sounds good enough, I guess. Who was responsible for the dynamic pricing? Basically, who can I get mad at right now? Where should I direct this outrage that I'm feeling? Who's making these prices do this? Is it Ticketmaster? Is it Live Nation? Is it the bands? Is it the band's management? And uh, the answer is all of the above. Ticketmaster has said for their concert tickets, artists or promoters are responsible for determining the number of tickets and set the face value for the prices. They can opt for dynamic pricing if they want, and it is implemented once Ticketmaster gets their approval. They can opt for dynamic pricing. So, if you want to get mad at Ticketmaster, that's fine because they're the big evil company, and it's good to be mad at big evil companies. That's who to be mad at. At the end of the day, it turns out that the artists can opt in for this kind of thing. So of course, some of the more greedy artists are gonna do that. But is it the artists or the management of the artists? Well, the management of the artists has to have that conversation with the artists. They don't normally just go ahead and do the thing. But when you are a part of a major record label, maybe they can set that kind of thing. But when you're at the level of the bands that we're hearing of with these most egregious horror stories, these are bands at a high enough level to have some sort of say in how they run their business, right? Blink-182, Taylor Swift, Oasis for fuck's sake. You got My Chemical Romance over here. The agency representing Oasis did not immediately comment. Okay, yeah, okay. I guess that kind of speaks for itself, does it not? Well, it seems kind of shady, but is dynamic pricing legal? While dynamic pricing might seem unfair to customers, it is considered legal as long as the company follows laws and regulations related to pricing transparency, consumer protection, and fair competition. Jesus Christ. It can be evil as long as it's within our normal parameters of evil. If you go outside of the normal parameters of corporate America evil, then you're gonna be dealing with some trouble, buddy. But yeah, surge pricing. It's just like Uber. Do it! But if you're just the biggest MCR fan, you dedicated your whole life to MCR, you know what I'm saying? You just love them so much. You're the one that deserves to be there. But that would be an insane ask. Your price is determined by the gauge of your passion. Come on now, how can we implement that? Some sort of forehead scan. Yeah, okay, you're legit. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. That sounds dystopian as f***. This all sounds dystopian as f So that's where the MCR situation sits right now. Some people are coping, some people are very happy that they got their tickets, and of course they're happy they got their tickets. Because they only had to pay $300 to $855 for the ticket, which is a bargain to the resale prices that we see going on over here. So you can be mad at the band, the management of the band, the label, ticket master, dynamic pricing, Live Nation, the venue, it doesn't even matter. The real problem is kind of systemic. And as long as long as there are people going, hey, can I get away with this and is it going to get me more money? And if the answer to that is yes and they can do it, they're going to do it. Especially if people are willing to just go along with the grift. Because it is a free market at the end of the day. Say I have this like little bit of water left, right? And it's all the water in the entire world. And I go, okay, I'm selling this for 25 cents. And now 3,000 people are surrounding me because everybody wants this water, right? And I'm saying it's worth 25 cents. Now all of a sudden be like, oh my god. All these people are here? No, no, no. This is now worth 10 grand. I am definitely gonna get 10 grand now for this little bit of water. If it's legal, you're definitely gonna do it. So yeah, it definitely sucks. Dynamic pricing is brutal. Not a fan. Like the whole live experience is getting sort of homogenized and stale and sterilized. Have fun at your corporate big shows. It's fine if you like your corporate big shows, but 
Did you know there are local scenes? I know, crazy, right? Really talented musicians, local to your area, just playing shows, demonstrating their talents for people, anybody that's willing to pay 10 to fucking $25 to come in and watch them do it. Hey, and guess what? They're actually as good at their instruments as the people that you're paying so many dollars to go see. So if it's like the instrumentation that you like or the genre of music that you like, there's a much smaller artist in your local area doing it just as good, if not better, that you can see for much less. Support your local scene if you can. If you love music and you love this genre, then I don't understand why you wouldn't do that. But if you're also being like, I don't mind spending fucking $10,000 to go see My Chemical Romance, I'm not here to tell you you can't do that. You can obviously do that. You're just dumb as fuck. I'm gonna go now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I reply to every comment left within the first three hours. Okay, see you later, take care, and have a good one.